Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and in the last couple of years, we've seen some amazing developments in the world of 3D graphics. Now, one thing you've probably gotten just familiar with at this point in time is the concept of photogrammetry. This is basically the idea of uh, taking a 3D scan of something, you take just so many photos of it from a variety of different angles, and then you reconstruct it as a traditional polygonal mesh. So the concept of photogrammetry has been around for quite a while, and we're actually using it quite a bit in the world of game development, although a lot of times these are super, super super high polygon models that you're dealing with here. And then from there, we've actually moved on to something called NERF. Now, this is neural uh, radiance fields, and this is an algorithm for basically using neural networks to simulate the way that light interacts with things in the scenes. You can get some pretty staggering results. It's much better than what you would get with traditional photogrammetry, and often with a lot less work. Now, one of the big downsides to NERF, though, is they just don't work in real time. So the idea of using NERF in game development just isn't something that's going to happen. So to the world of game developers, this hasn't been that special. Hello, this, this is special. Now, this was a paper that was released at SIGGRAPH, the annual graphics development conference. Um, and it's actually a really cool paper because it's actually got code, executables, viewers, uh, the paper itself, everything you need to actually go ahead and implement something called um, Gaussian splatting. So this is another way of doing uh, radiance fields. Instead of using a neural network, though, you can do this in real time. So you can see a number of examples going on down below. Now, the way that Gaussian splatting works, it's... Um Okay, I'm going to butcher this in my definition, but you can think of it as the world is being made up with a number of points, and those points are actually being drawn uh, with a, a Gauss pattern. So basically, it is, like, think of it like a blob that is a color gradient that is rendered in the world. Now, the big thing about this, so you can see they're comparing theirs to Nerf on the one side. Well, the magical thing here with these is that this actually can be done in real time. So this means using these 3D environments in a game environment is actually possible. It actually goes a little bit beyond possible uh, and it's actually happened. So what we've got right here, well this is uh, a web-based viewer for them. So if you wanna just check it out, so you can pick out any particular model here. So I'll pick this church right here. This is a 70 megabyte download on my end. Uh, generally the Nerf on the other end is quite a bit larger and you can see this was scanned using a drone and this is a uh, 3D environment. So again, if you've worked with photogrammetry, you got an idea of what's going on here. As you zoom out, you're going to obviously see it's uh, a little bit less detailed once you get outside of the scan. But this works a whole lot like what you would expect from photogrammetry. But the thing is, uh, using Gaussian splatting is they can actually... Um, render these in real time. So there's a bunch here you can play around with. If you want to check them out in your browser, uh, there's just a variety here you can see. So example here, this is a 3D scan of a car. I also believe that these scans are kind of easier to make than what you see with photogrammetry because it doesn't need to recreate everything. It's literally creating the, the scene out of a point cloud uh, with colored dots, essentially is how this works. Now you're wondering, okay, how do I use this in a game engine? Well, there's actually two implementations available. One of them is for Unreal Engine, and as you may notice, it has a price tag of $137. We'll not be using that example today. Instead, what we're going to look at is this from Eris. Uh, Eris P, he used to be a developer at uh, Unity. Uh, he is also, I think he's semi-retired now. He runs the uh, Game Dev Mastodon channel, by the way. But he also did a um, uh, toy Gaussian splatting playground in Unity. And that's what we're going to be checking out today. So you can actually see how Gaussian splatting will actually work in a real-time environment. And this is running entirely on my M1 Mac, by the way. So this is uh, an M1, what the hell were they called? Max. 24-core uh, GPU. Uh, so this is... Uh, a 32 gigabyte machine just for an idea of the power uh, or the capabilities of this guy and this is the project that you can go ahead and download you need to be using a reasonably current version of unity 2022 point something or later uh, and the, here you can see the scene it has this gaussian splats offering here and you put an asset in there to actually go ahead and create that asset you're going to need uh, a PLY file, so basically a point cloud file. There's a number of them linked. I'll show you where you can get some uh, in just a moment. So we go here, Gaussian Splat, and you go ahead and create a new one. So once you've done that, then you can pick the Gaussian Splat file to work with. In this case, I've already got one set up, so you can go ahead and create it there. And you can do, um, you know, the quality, the um, 
overall quality that you want. You're going to notice the positional data here is taking up uh, 14 megabytes. Your scale data is taking up 27 megabytes. Color is 13 megabytes. And the SH, I forget exactly what it stands for, is taking up 110. So 165 megabytes total asset size. Uh, that is definitely shrunk down. By the way, you can up the quality and get a different result there. And then once you've got that, basically you can drop your asset in over here. So this is, again, just a PLY file that we've imported, and boom. So this is in Unity. And I'm actually just using traditional navigation in Unity around that scene. So this is super impressive. This is a, a 3D scene. Obviously, when you get out of the area that's been scanned, there's less information available for it to actually use for point data. And so the... Um, the Gaussian splatting doesn't look nearly as good. So obviously it's circled around this bike here. But as you can see, you can bring in real world, super hyper realistic models. Now, there are definitely downsides to this approach. It is not uh, super, super performant. So you're probably better off using something like uh, Unreal Engine, Nanite, uh, or maybe a combination of Nanite and this. I don't know if you could use Gaussian splatting with a Nanite type solution. It'll probably come at some point in the future. You can see it; it's chugging along to a certain degree as it goes. You've also got a number of options here, by the way. So uh, the splats, like I said, are basically blobs in 3D space that are being rendered. And they have color data in the form of like, well, that's where the Gaussian part comes in you can think of it like a gradient color uh, and here you can change the the splat scales so the actual size of the splats and as you go over it actually goes blurred and and bloomed out whereas you start losing detail if you go under um, you can also do things like change so instead of rendering the splats here let's look up the points that make this up so it's just a big world of points I can change the point size here so this is the PLY file this is the point cloud that we're doing here and it's these Gaussian splats that go together to create things so instead of using polygon rendering what we're traditionally used to it's a basically a bunch of dots in space you can almost think of it the same thing like voxels and it's actually got some of the same downsides like what voxels had back in the day when Nova Logic made voxel based games engines what they couldn't do is things like um animation it's just one of those things that's not in the cards plus the data sets are quite large by the way there are a number of different options here so you can have it render with uh debug boxes chunk bounds uh and then we got here point interface uh so basically there's your world again it is a bunch of dots like here that are painted as blobs in space and that is how you get real-time splatting and as you can see you can actually navigate around it so you're not going to get 60 frames per second world going on here but this is a system that works with gpus so you can actually get this kind of thing accelerated and i think you can also get collision to some form set up here now you could also kind of mix this with other technologies so if you needed to do uh, collision bounds in the space you could probably turn uh, them into it with something like sine distance fields to create your collision shapes etc uh, there are definitely some areas you need to work with now another thing i really want to point out here is this is a toy renderer so uh you know i find the performance impressive at this point in time but this was not intended to be hyper fast so uh Aris himself says that this could actually be quite a bit faster it is not intended to illustrate that kind of thing by the way if you're wondering how many splats there are actually in the scene you can see them right here so you're looking at 3.6 million splats to make up this scene uh, and again this is going to allow you to acquire super high definition real world models and get them actually into real-time 3d now is this going to be the future of 3d probably quite a ways down the road but i could definitely see splat uh this this technology and other technologies working together uh in the future for us for sure it, it's um kind of taken photogrammetry and made it easier and unlike nerf you don't need that um neural network aspect to it so the results are again more real time so a very, very impressive technology. If you want to learn more about it, uh, again, I would say Eris is probably the best source because not only has he actually provided this system, which by the way, this is all a toy. It is not robust. It does not handle errors gracefully. It does not interact or com um, composite well with the rest of rendering. So that's like the other things in your scene. Or like I said, if you want to have collisions in there, or you want to mix other 3D objects in with the um, splatting, you can't. So it's it's not for all these things. It is not fast, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Don't file bugs or issues just yet. Most likely ignore them and do whatever I please. I love Eris. Uh, by the way, if you're using this on um, Windows, you're going to need to 
to use DirectX 12 or Vulkan. Uh, in this case, I am using a Mac. Uh, and yeah, you're going to need an input PLY file. Now, if you actually come on down here, uh, the original paper is linked, and they also have 14 gigabytes of um, basically models that you can work with. I've actually downloaded. That's where I got the bicycle model from. If you want to go ahead and check these out, there are a bunch available there. Uh, the cool thing on top of that is in his blog, blog, uh, blog, he's actually got some really cool breakdowns of splatting, of the uh, advantages of the splat. So basically, here's the, the overview. It's basically a bunch of blobs in space. Instead of representing a 3D scene as polygonal meshes or voxels or distance fields, it, re it represents it as millions of particles. Each particle a 3D Gaussian, uh, has position, rotation, and non-uniform scale in 3D space. Each particle has an opacity as well as a color. Uh, that's where the, the Gauss part comes in. So it's a third-order spherical harmonic coefficient, meaning the color can change depending on the view direction. And then for rendering, the particles are rendered or splatted as 2D Gaussians in screen space, i.e. they are not rendered as scaled elongated spheres, actually. More on that below. So if you want to get into the technical details of how we implemented it, it is all here. Uh, and again, it doesn't need to use neural network kind of approach, so you can actually get this in uh, real-time performance, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, they've got some other things that it was actually built on previous technology, etc. And he's also done some follow-ups uh, where he talks about um, making it smaller and smaller, his actual implementation and how he went about doing it. Again, I don't know how well this is going to slot into a traditional 3D workflow. I do think uh, Gaussian splatting is definitely going to be a thing. Uh, I think this will be pretty common for 3D capture uh, going forward. I know some of the most popular tools out there already support it to a certain degree. Uh, and I think that it's going to be an important technology in the world of 3D graphics. And if nothing else, it is a very, very cool technology to play with. And thanks to Eris for making this uh, toy renderer. Uh, also, if you're interested, once again, uh, there is the JavaScript version of it. So you can check out a variety of them in action uh, right here. So this is one such example of uh, it in this, this web uh, interface. You can see here they've got a couple of other ones you can check out. Also, if you go back to the original article, so the 3D Gaussian splatting, they actually have uh, all their code available as well. Uh, so if you want to try and do a reference of your own, if someone wants to make a very cool uh, Godot implementation, that would be uh, pretty neat. But the paper is all here. The entire data sets are here. And this was just released, uh, again, back in September, I believe it was. So it's kind of set the graphics world on fire. It's a very cool technology, in my opinion. It, it's probably a ways away. And then one thing you're going to want to notice. So uh, if you want to train a data set, you actually need 24 gigabytes of VRAM. There are some tools for making these data sets online. Uh, so that's just basically to generate the 3D uh, environment for the splats, like the actual data model that you're using here. To consume it, you can do it with a great deal less. And they've actually got um, an interactive viewer available here as well. And if you're on Windows, there are pre-compiled binaries for going ahead and checking that out. So I will have all the relevant links down below. Uh, but uh, Gaussian splatting, this is definitely part of the future of uh, 3D, for sure. Are we going to see it in real time in games? There's a lot of uh, snags to get over and, and to conquer, but I think the technology is too cool to not be explored farther. So let me know what you think of this and the whole photogrammetry nerf and now uh, Gaussian splatting, uh, what you think of all the technology that's out there and are you as impressed with it as I am? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.